A very good morning. You're watching News 9 with me, Akshita. And first up, a gang of masked men struck at a consultancy office in Bengaluru. The gang entered the office late last night, which is located in Malagala. They entered the auto consultancy office and stole 1,30,000 rupees. They also smashed the windshield of the swift car parked outside. The owner claims that this is a case of revenge attack. And, uh, well, uh, it looks like all this chaos took place last night uh, when uh, a bunch of masked men made their way into this particular auto consultancy office. Uh, they went on to ransack the office and made away with almost 1,30,000 rupees. And uh, besides that, also they went on to damage a swift car which belonged to the owner. Uh, they were seen throwing a, a rock inside and also damaging the windshield completely. Now, when the owner was spoken to, he went on to state that in all likelihood, this seems like a revenge attack. Yara apare chitru bando, i langu machu ella torsi bag lor do, orada de parne charan ella orada ki orada de van lakshit nalvas saavro pay cash iti dranthe na muru do, aata do, adonu othko lo idare, plus swift car avur deya, avur no orada ki idare, ella full orada ki idare. And while moving on, it is the prerogative of the Pollution Control Board to ensure that the environment we live in is pollution free. But sadly, the entity finds itself in muddy waters and its officials are involved in mudslinging. The Karnataka State Pollution Control Board came into being with an objective. The objective to keep the environment clean and healthy. But some unhealthy practices are being reported within the board. It is quite apparent that something is amiss in Pollution Control Board. Recently, we have reported about an honest officer being sidelined and the corrupt one being favoured. Now it has come to light that the chairman of the board, Dr. Vaman Acharya, is absolutely unhappy with the functioning of board's secretary, Ramachandra. In fact, the chairman has written a confidential letter to Kaushik Mukherjee, the chief secretary of Karnataka government, which News 9 has access to. The chairman in his letter has strongly condemned functioning of Ramachandra. He has written about his frequent interference in board's affairs and has alleged that he put pressure on the staff to work according to his whims and fancies. He was trying to influence all the decisions taken by the chairman, thereby relegating his position as chairman. Dr. Vaman Acharya has also alleged that Ramachandra during his general transfers has seen to it that his henchmen occupy the most important positions. At the conclusion of his letter, the chairman makes daring accusation about Ramachandra being a corrupt official and nothing can be expected from an official of his caliber. The chairman has also pointed fingers at the undersecretary of the board Anusu Yama and caseworker Manjunath who have made it a habit of challenging every decision taken by the board. When our correspondent spoke to Ramachandra on his take about the allegations made against him, he preferred to remain silent but suggested that we speak to the Chief Secretary himself. While it is quite obvious that Pollution Control Board is polluted for sure and needs some remedial measures to stop the situation from getting murkier. Anand Burli for News 9, Bengaluru. Mining barons V.S. Lard and Sons have lost yet another property after the web of theatre. The amazing valley resort in Bellari owned by the Lard family has been seized by the forest officials. The amazing valley resort in the northeastern range forest block in Sandur Taluk had special visitors. It was visited by the forest department officials accompanied by a team of cops. They marched towards the resort and stuck a notice addressed from the forest department official. Then they locked up the doors of the resort. The resort owned by the mining barons was seized by the forest officials. The resort constructed on 47.24 acres of forest land was originally owned by Bellari Congress MLA Anil Lard's late brother Ashok Lard. The forest department had asked the Lard brothers to vacate the illegally encroached land. They had also sent a notice to Rajani Lard, wife of late Ashok Lard. But the Lard brothers failed to vacate the land. 
Yesterday being the last day to serve the notice, the forest officials barged into the resort and finally seized the property. The resort was run by supporters of MLA Anil Lard. Ashok Lard had bought 3.65 acres of revenue land to cultivate it, but the brothers gradually encroached 47.24 acres of the land. This was brought to light by social activist Soma Shekhar in February 2012. A case was filed in the High Court and after the survey of the land, the Forest Department was ordered to take back the encroached land. Anil Lard rubbishes allegations of encroachment. We have not encroached any forest land. I will appeal to the High Court and file a petition under Green Bench. Seizing the resort comes as another shocker to the Lard brothers, who recently lost the popular vibe of theatre after failing to repay the loan. Basavaraj Haranahalli, News 9, Bellari. And well, here's a man who alleges that the Karnataka Forest Department is against him and will even kill him on the pretext of an encounter. So who are we talking about? Let's find out. Saravanan is often termed Mari Virappan. His associates have expressed interest in surrendering. They have made this intent through a video recording through a human rights activist. Activist Julius has released this video. Chinnapi, who is Saravanan's close aide, has appeared in the video. Here is what he has said. I am Chinnapi. I am also called Motta. I was with Saravanan who was also called Marivi Rappan. Right now I am walking around in the forest incognito. I feed on honey. There are many like me in the forest. We are living in fear. The Karnataka Forest Department has issued a threat that it will kill us in an encounter. We are ready to surrender to Tamil Nadu police or court. Please assure us that we will be jailed in Tamil Nadu only. If we are sent to Karnataka jail, we are sure that we will be killed. So I am ready to surrender. Sorry. Sorry. Around 10 people like Chinnapi are in the forest along with him. Selva Kumar, Aruswami and Alagasan have also met the human rights activist. To sustain their lives, they cut woods. It is said that Kutibi Rippen was grown up by Karnataka police themselves. There is an allegation that these people are tailoring a situation to get him killed. Marivi Rippen is already in jail. What remains to be seen is what reaction does the Tamil Nadu government take in this regard. Ramesh Kantirava for News 9, Chennai.